Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. This interview took 11 years in the making. <laughs> 11. Yeah, not 11 from Stranger Things, <laughs> but real 11. We're having a conversation with actor Sarah Nicklin. We met long ago, and as I said, 11 freaking years in the making. I'm going to read the bio on her because holy, well, I can't cuss on my show, but. Uh, Good yeah. to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I'll put a disclaimer on what the hell, shoot. <laughs> okay, here we go, y'all. Sarah Nicklin is a three-time Best Actress Award winner for her roles in Exhumed, Victimized, and Escape the Dark. She has extensively worked in indie films with roughly 100 credits to her name and has been lead in over 30 features. Wow. Some of her <laughs> most notable credits include Lions Gates, American Exit, appearing opposite Dane Cook and Levi Miller, Missing William, appearing opposite Brandon Routh, who played Superman, you guys. Also done a film called Dylan Dog, which I got a chance to talk to him with that. Uh, and Courtney Ford, The Retaliators, starring Mark, help me out here, Sarah, I'm gonna mix his name up. Menchaca, I know, it's a tough one. Yeah, and Michael Lombard, <laughs> and the daytime television show, wait a minute, The Bold and the Beautiful? I, one episode, just one episode, I was in and out, yep. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> she has gotten the most notoriety and achieved a fan following within the genre films where her breakout roles in none of that. Now, is that available to watch now? It actually is. Um, so it was retitled as Sister Wrath and is now available on, I believe it's Tubi and Prime. Okay. We'll be watching for that one. <laughs> Ex exhumed. The Haunting of Alice D. She has shared the screen with horror icons Danielle Harris, Kane Hodder, Tony Moran, Ken Fulway, Michael Berryman, and many, many more. So let's put that down, Sarah, first of all. Thank you. I mean, okay, folks, we were, I was on Instagram. And, you know, you get these suggestions of who to, you know, check out their page. And then I see this. I said, Sarah Nicklin. I'm like, no, it can't be from the disco exorcist. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's where we first met. Uh, Lauren was, um, uh, yeah, that's where we yeah. met you guys. That, it and, was, um, uh, it was, that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was <laughs> a long, <t> <laughs> a long time ago. And I just put out there. Okay. So is this the Sarah Nicklin? I remember. And she said, yes, it is. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Larson Associates, big ups to you, big ups to you. So Sarah, let's first of all, talk about your career and how did you get started? And you were in something called I think, Squ Scream Queens or? Um, let's see, I, I don't know if I did a thing specifically called Scream Queens. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been labeled a scream queen right. <laughs> several, right. several people. <laughs> um, I did do a, like a horror thing called uh, Horror Geeks. That was like a like talk show kind of like horror specific um, thing for that. But yeah, I think the scream queen thing just came out of mostly doing a lot of horror movies over the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so um, yeah, that's, I mean, I got started, I first... I've, I've been acting since middle school. I've just been doing like school plays all throughout middle school and high school. And then I decided that I wanted to do film. And so I went to college for, uh, for film um, at Emerson. And I just, I fell in love with it. I, I originally started because I had a giant crush on JTT, the, the child actor. And I thought, you know, all actors know each other. So I just need to become an actor and that way I'll meet him. <laughs> 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 so this is my like... 10 year old and, logic <laughs> and never met him oh. i did meet devin sawa though that was very close That's okay like, see that was of the same time period those like you know teeny pop guys mm -hmm. that were on all those magazines <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah did that and then just started started acting started doing independent film um in boston when i was in school there and it just kind of snowballed from there i mean 
horror is a really loyal genre. So once you start working in horror, a lot of other people just like find you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you have to be pretty good too, I'm sure. You have to, yeah, you have to yeah. not talk. You have to also have like a reputation that you're like good to work with. You're not going to be a mm -hmm. diva, not going to be a problem. Cause like, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of like people reaching out to, you know, previous directors or someone else they know be like, what does she like to work with? And that's like the biggest thing more so than even being good is that you'll be easy to work with and, you know, nice on set and not cause a problem. You know, I find that, that, that quite fascinating what you just said, because I've met people, you know, throughout the years and I don't see them anymore. I you know, sit down the interview and then they act like they don't want to be there. <laughs> they give you two word answers and it's like, okay, this is like pulling teeth. You know, you might be under obligation to, but come on, let's just, let's just work this out. And they're no longer around. Yeah. I think, I mean, that probably has something to do with it. People want to be around people that are like friendly and personable. You know, you don't want to be working with an asshole, even if they're a fantastic actor. And I think especially in the past, you know, couple of years, especially since COVID like, the thing and COVID, yes. and, like, all of that, it's really been uh, weeding out a lot of that. It's, it's really become a, a position of we're not going to put up with this type of behavior anymore. And I do think that people that are not, necessarily good I don't want to say good people but like are not necessarily easy to work with are are kind of falling away a little bit right and I think at least me personally I think that's a good thing no I agree I yeah. totally agree you know because your your film is funded you only have a certain amount of time period to get this done under budget mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> now let's talk about um, there's a film you're working on right now. When I saw it, Kevin Sarbo. Yes. Yeah, you guys remember Hercules from back in the day, right? And I mean, I, I almost like say, wait, hold up, Kevin Sarbo, send me some stuff, send me anything. And Sarah's like, well, I can't because you know we're it's still being edited. So, <laughs> so tell yeah. us, okay, how did you land that role in that film, and then working with him and the cast? Sure. Um, so that I got that role just because I was persistent, essentially. <laughs> um, so what did you do? That, Come on. <laughs> that uh, is a film that is being uh, or was uh, produced and created by uh, this this group of filmmakers called uh, the Mahal Empire. So Mahal Brothers, and they're based out of Vegas. Um, and they do several films a year. And I saw that they were going to be doing this medieval fantasy film. And I love medieval fantasy more than every anything. And it's something you don't often get to do on a lower budget because they're so expensive with the costuming and locations and all that stuff yeah. so I was like I was on Facebook and I'm like researching and I'm like okay they're tagging this person and this person in all of their things who is the writer who's the director who's the producer how do I find their emails let me email all of them <laughs> and just be like hey I would love to be in your movie Here's my demo reel. Here's also my sword fighting reel because I've done sword fighting before. So I thought that, that might like right? be a like <laughs> selling point. Um, so I knew nothing of the script. I knew nothing of like what kind of roles they were casting. I was just like, let me email all of these people and um, you know, interact with them on Facebook and like just be in their face in a non-annoying way <laughs> <laughs> as much as I could be. Um and it ended up working out. So um, yeah, the the writer said, he was like, let me pass your info over to the director. And he did. I emailed the director anyway on my own too. <laughs> um, and he, uh, yeah, he really, he really liked my stuff and he wanted me for the part. Um, originally the producers had someone else in mind that they wanted for the part, but I think she was not able to do it. And so like, then it was just like, okay, well, we're just going to go with Sarah. So like, I'm like, great. Great. wonderful so it was like two weeks or so um, before we started shooting and then I had to do some like sword fight training um, we, we had a fight choreographer so that was super fun um, just to like brush up on all of that stuff so that that whole process was great and then actually filming it was an absolute blast I mean how often do you get to be like in a castle in medieval dresses one day and a suit of armor the next day and like all of that was just like everything I wanted it to be 
Kevin Sorbo was so nice. He was so accommodating with like everybody, such a good guy. We were, we were shooting over um, Father's Day. And so since I grew up watching Hercules with my dad, that was like a bonding thing that we did. So oh I- Oh my goodness. Asked, hold, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. Yes. You were watching with your father. Yes. Okay. Can I, how old were you when you were watching? I'm just- Oh, I was- uh i'm gonna say eight ish jesus i'm old i remember watching that when i was an older young adult hell <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh no maybe somewhere in there like <laughs> maybe eight to 14 before well before 14 because you know <clears throat> you don't want nothing to do with your parents once you're 14 so before that <laughs> oh boy okay well uh, anyway continue with this story. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I know. It's the, the hazards of getting old, you see it like every day. You look like Harrison Ford and you're like, oh my God, I'm old now. What happened? <laughs> Everyone, um, we're here talking to Sarah Nicklin, actor. We're just, oh, uh, mm, we're talking about Hercules, a new, as in a new film she's in with Kevin Sarbo. Now, working with the sword fighting, how challenging, you had to brush up on your skills again. How challenging was that to, I guess, unlearn maybe bad habits and then relearn the sword fighting? Um, I actually think that the the classes that I had taken had given me a pretty good um, foundation. So I had um, done some training with uh, Tim Westy of uh, Swordplay LA, who is a really like world-renowned uh, fight choreographer, sword fighter. He's done a lot of movies um, like Man in the Iron Mask and like a, like a whole bunch of things where he, he do, did the, the sword fighting in it. And so I think it laid a really good groundwork for me um and also in doing that training I realized how much uh, how much fun I had with that and how much I loved it <laughs> um so when it came to doing it for this film I already had some confidence in that and I already had an understanding of like the terminology and like the the parries and even though it was a little different the way that our instructor was teaching us and the way that he numbered the parries versus when I originally had learned it it's still pretty much all lined up um, and it even like the first, my first meeting with our fight trainer, he, at, we did like a couple of drills and he was like, okay, good. I'm not worried anymore. I was worried at first because we had so little time, but I'm not worried anymore. I'm like, great. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. <laughs> um, I think the most difficult part of that was I didn't really get a chance to rehearse much with the actress that I was fighting against, um, because she's based in Utah. So, she had done um, a little bit of sort of like a day or two uh, with the trainer. She had come out to Los Angeles, um, but her and I never got a chance to actually fight together or do choreography together until we were there on set. So it was literally like two days before we're supposed to shoot our fight scene that we're like learning the choreography together and like <laughs> trying to, you know, figure it out. Um, but I think it turned out really well. Um, I think it's going to be one of the, the better fights in the in the film. Um, yeah, and it was super, it was just so much fun. It was so much fun. <laughs> and, you know, no pressure. I'm just sword fighting in front of Hercules. Like, no big deal. <laughs> I mean, okay, when, okay, so you met Kevin Sarbo. Now you're sword fighting in front of him. Did you, like, I would say, lose composure because you met, like, oh my goodness, I'm sitting in, or I'm working with this guy I used to watch when I was little, and I'm just, just for a split second, you'd like, oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But yep. I did that the, like when I very first, because that was his first day on set too. So it's not like we had built up rapport before mm -hmm. that or anything. Um, so I did, I allowed myself to have that like fangirl moment, like when yep. I first met him. And then I was like, okay, I need to put that away now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to focus on what I'm doing and I have yeah. to be professional. So um, yes, I totally had that moment, but I just like, compartmentalized it and then moved on and like okay <laughs> and I felt really like I felt really proud because like after he um after we did one of because the fight has like three uh stanzas to it mm -hmm. um and after we did like the first sequence he was just came up to me and we were just you know hanging out on set and he was like uh, so so are are you, are you a stunt actor and I'm like no I'm not but I think that's a big, like, you know, that, that's very, you're very being <clears throat> a big accomplishment to like 
that you think I might be a stunt actor. I'm doing a good enough job, <laughs> at least, you know, that you think that this is a, something that I do professionally. So that was, <laughs> that was very exciting. Yeah, I tell you, I got the same feeling when I um, watched the Bruce Willis films. Oh, yeah. Die Hard, all those particular films back in the 80s, early 90s, because we were looking at, we had Stallone, we had Arnold, you know, real muscular guys. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Bruce Willis comes out, pod belly, smoking cigarette. We're like, he's the everyday guy. So he had, Absolutely. we gave him the hood credit. So years ago, I get to sit down and interview him. And I had that moment like you did. I said, well, uh, well welcome to the, uh, uh. and he said, you know, go, you, you can finish up the statement. And it, I said, okay. <laughs> And that part you'll never see because I edited that part out, but it was just like, I can't believe it. I'm sitting in front of this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yes. And I, just, I put it away and then finished the interview. Yeah. Now, now let's chat horror films. Sure. Since <laughs> you've been in horror a, a, some period of time. When you watch horror films, do you yell at the screen and just say, because we'll watch, we're like, why are you walking in that room? You're by yourself. It's dark. We're not going to do this. We're going to. And then you see what happens. So do you ever like critique and say, you know, uh, come on, you guys. I I definitely think I definitely critique while I'm watching horror films, um, but it's not so much like yelling at the characters, like making this decision. It's more yes. like this writer's stupid. Why would they? They would do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the, like <laughs> like that's a terrible line of dialogue, or like <laughs> it's more the like the behind the mechanics behind it than necessarily the because the actors are just doing their job yes for as much as they can for the most part they could be messing things up too and going off script or whatever but a lot of the times you know if something's not going right in the film i I more would blame the writers or the director than the characters yeah we do that you know we do it for i don't know if it's for fun or excuse me it's like okay I, I know I can't be in that situation but then that's not the situation is written like that so you either have to play that situation or you, know, you like you say you exit stage left exactly yep. exactly yep <laughs> exit stage left you guys so what's next you dropped a lot of gems on how to get the role that you got with the particular the um the medieval film yeah <laughs> I'm just hoping a lot of people you watch this interview you take notes she did it and you can too it's very true when you're waiting on the roll let's say when you get do you get the phone call the email what do you do besides you know waiting on the roll within the call you apply for the film and then you're waiting so what do you do in your spare time so there, I mean, there's a couple like different strategies or tactics that I kind of like put out there. Um, one is that kind of more aggressive, like what I did with that film, where if it's something I really want to go after and I think I am a good fit, I will find these people and email them <laughs> and interact with them on social media just to like be be present. Um, but there's also a fine line with that. You don't want to like be emailing them every day or every week or, you know, you Stalker. don't want to <clears throat> Exactly. <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta walk that line. And if they're, they're not responding to you, then they're not responding to you. There's something else, you know, going on. They already have their person, whatever. Um, so you gotta just like back off of that. Um, so I do that whenever there's a role that, or a film that I'm really interested in, in being in. But aside from that, I try to do, I mean, there's always just the standard like submissions whenever, you know, there's casting calls that are put out and just constantly keeping up with all of those. And then there's also the like marketing aspect um, because you, you as an actor are your own business. And so you are also in charge of your own marketing. Um, And a lot of that is really just social media and as a time consuming and annoying as it is as an actor part of your job is to have a social media presence that is unfortunately the the day and age that we live in now um so 
interacting with other filmmakers, following people who are doing cool things that maybe they're not casting for something right now, but they, you saw their film at a festival and really liked it. So I'll do that. I'll go on social media and be like, Hey, I saw your film at XYZ. I thought it was really good. And I'll start following them. And then you have a little bit of a connection. So if they do something later, maybe you're more in their mind than if you're just a random person. Um, so yeah, po posting good content, making a <laughs> the smoke and mirrors of like, I'm always working, I'm always doing something because a lot of that is just smoke and mirrors. I mean, everyone on social media is putting the best version of themselves out there. So you want to make yourself look as desirable as possible. Um, and then also doing things, you know, like this, doing like interviews and, you know, and articles and just whatever you can do to like, constantly have something going on, something to talk about, something that you can be helping to stay top of mind with, um, I think is, is a lot of it, honestly, because <laughs> if you're not doing that, if you're not, I feel like I'm, it's a, like being a little annoying because you're always like, look at me, look at me. But if you're not doing that, then people forget about you. And then they don't come calling, even if there's a part that you would be good for. Mm. You just said something, Sarah, and um, <laughs> only because I've met you 11 years ago, I'm going to let you get away with it, but top of mind, I can't stand that saying. I just, <laughs> Sorry. I heard it, well, the press secretary used it, then I watched some other political people try to put it in, slip it in, I'm saying, yeah. what, what is this? But yeah. for you, okay, we'll- Sorry. We'll let, no problem, no problem. I was talking to my mom. I said, Mama, why are they using top of mind? And here on my own show, we have my girl, Sarah Nicklin, using top of mind. So we're going to reevaluate. Uh-oh, your camera froze. Oh, no. Oh, no, Sarah, your camera froze. Come back in. <laughs> uh, okay. Ah, okay everybody we lost her hopefully she'll come back in hopefully hopefully you guys got something good out of the interview because she gave, she dropped a lot of gems there, a whole bunch of information, how to go for a role, how to, well, you'll see, watch the interview. So 